And as I looked at them, something began to pull me up, and I started rising up in this tunnel. And I didn't know what it was, but I was starting to move. And I, I just wanted to get out of here, but I knew I would never get out. And that I thought, who could fight these demons? They're so powerful and so big. No one could fight them. That's what's in your mind. No one could fight them off. And the fear, again, I'm totally traumatized and looking at all this and going up this tunnel. And about halfway up, it's pitch black and I'm terrified. And all of a sudden, this bright light shows up. Yeah. Glory to God. As soon as it showed up, it was so bright, you didn't have any question about who it was. None. None. Instantly, I fell on my knees. It's the only thing you could do. And right then, the Lord put it back in my mind that I was a Christian. Hallelujah. Glory. To go from the mind of total fear and trembling and that to instant saved, I'm telling you, it was nothing like it to feel because the only ticket out of this place was Jesus. That was the only way. And you knew that clearly. There is no hope for them. You'll never get out. Only you have to know Jesus. I was so grateful I knew Jesus. I just felt his feet and weeped. And you know, we sung about his holiness. And I tell you, when you're in his presence, you, know, you, you can't even describe how holy he is and, and how much he loves people. He loves us so much. And for him to see us people, his creation, go there. It's like try to imagine your children, one of your kids, going to this place forever. You can't imagine, right? You can't imagine how sad you'd be that your kid would be there. Well, he has so much more love for us than we have for our own family and our own kids. And I just, I, I just felt his feet. I didn't want him to leave. I just wanted to worship him. And in Revelations 1, 6, it says, and, and, it, and his countenance was as the sun that shineth in his strength, John says. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man. That's how I felt. You just didn't want to move. You just fell. You didn't even feel like you had the right even to ask him anything. I mean, it, even though we do, you felt he's so holy. This is the God of creation. I just want to worship him. I just want to worship him. I was so grateful. I just thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And I did, I don't think I verbally asked him anything. I thought things, and he just answered my thoughts. And I thought, Jesus, why did you send me to this place? And he answered me immediately, and he said, because people do not believe this place exists. They do not believe it's real. He said, even some of my own people don't believe this place is real. And that startled me. Like, even Christians don't believe it? Where do they believe they're saved from? But yet people, we've met people that don't believe that hell is a literal burning place. And he said, I want you to go tell them. Tell them this place is real. Tell them. And my thought right then was, it popped in my head for a second. Uh, but who's going to believe me? You know, they're going to think I'm crazy or had a bad dream. That's what came into my mind. But instantly he answered my thought. And he said, it's not your job to convict their hearts. It's the Holy Spirit. He said, it's your job to just tell them. Tell them. I'll convict their hearts. Well, right away, instantly, it was like, yes, sir. I, I, you didn't want to even... It was, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's, that's the Holy Spirit's job. So that thought leaves when you're in his presence. You just, there's a boldness like, I've got to tell them. I've got to tell them. I, ha I have the answer. These people are going there unless we go out and tell them. And I, I said, Lord, why did you pick me? Why did you have me go here? But he didn't answer me. He didn't tell me. He didn't give me an answer. Why? And I didn't want to bug him about it. <laughs> I just wanted to worship him and, and not have him go away. It's like, don't leave. Don't ever leave. Please don't leave. And also, look... I couldn't see him physically. I could just see a bright light and an outline of a man, the shape of a man. Because it's so bright, you can't really see him. And I just looked in this bright light, so bright and white light, different than light we see. You know when you see these cars that have the headlights that are the new laser headlights and it's more white? Well, it's, you've got to go that direction. It's so white and pure and holy. It's like you, all of a sudden, the holiness of God just permeates every part of you and it's just so exciting to be with him uh, you I picked up on his power 
his awesome power. It's, the Bible talks about he has infinite power. And you realize it when you're with him. He is in control. <laughs> you know, we think the devil runs. The devil, he doesn't run anything. God is in control of this place. But yet, his awesome love, the love he has for people, is so overwhelming. You're just flooded with it. And you can't even stand it. You're just weeping. Because you feel the love he has for mankind. And he said, I don't want anybody to go to this place. Not one person do I want to go to this place. But he said, you've got to go and tell them. He said, because I am coming very, very soon. Praise God. And he said it real strong like that. And then again, he said it about a minute later. He said, tell them I am coming. Because he said, I am coming very, very soon. And I took it like it was soon. Yeah, I, I should have asked. I wish I would have asked. Like now you want to say, well, what's soon is soon? Are you, you know, 10 years, 20? And now you think that, but when you're with him, you don't think that way. You just, you, you, it's, you're too, too respectful. But I took inside that he meant it was soon. It's, it's not long from now. Amen. It's not long. We're his mouthpiece. And here we keep our mouth shut. And he, he also said, he said, my people find excuses not to witness. He said they back off and give up too easy. But when you're with him, it's so urgent. You feel this urgency. You've got to go tell the world because they're going to this place. And we came up on California, came up on my home. And I looked and saw, there's my house. And, and as we came closer to it, I could see right through the roof. And I saw myself laying on the floor in the living room. And as we came up to the body, my body, and uh, something sucked me back in, like a suction, pulled me back in through my mouth or nose, I'm not sure which. And when I came back in, then the Lord left right then. When he was there, all those demons, everything in the tunnel, they all looked like ants. They were like nothing. And the power of God and the was perfect love cast out fear, I was totally at peace. But when he left now, all of a sudden the fear and the terror came back in my mind. It's like that section being with him was taken away for a minute and uh, the fear came back in so I just came to screaming and terrified and screaming and I was totally in trauma I didn't even know I was back and then that woke up my wife 